So I'm going to be doing a hike of the Camino Portugues. Let me see if we can focus on this here. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. I'm going to be hiking on the Camino Portugues in about a week and a half, uh, which is a hike that goes from, I'm going to be hiking from Lisbon up to uh, Santiago Compostela in Spain. And so this is my gear. Um, first, I'll start with my pack. This is uh, an REI Traverse. Um, it's, it's basically a day pack. It's a 30 liter. Um, I got this on sale. It was a closeout of, I think, a 2013 model. Um, I like this bag a lot. It's really well, I mean, it just, the, man, the, the seams on it feel really good. It feels well made, which, you know, I guess I shouldn't be saying before I've actually worn it <laughs> really at all. Because I've really barely worn this, um, just here and there. Um, it's got these side pockets that are great. People have, I've seen other reviews of these and people have kind of had nothing but good things to say about them. Um, it's a good little belt strap system and they're very big hip pockets, which I like, um, which is one of my complaints about the other pack I've used extensively with the Osprey, but this is kind of a mesh here. Um, for padding, it's not an, it, there's a very soft frame. I don't think there really is a frame. Um, it's just got this sort of, this foam padding here and on the, on your shoulder blades. And this is sort of a, just a, like a board. There's no real, I mean, this I can't really feel any extensive framing. There might be some minimal amount. No, there, I, yeah, there, there's some metal in there. There's something in there that's kind of, that's really stiff. But um, this is, this pack can, you can compress it. It has compression straps on the side and two water, water bottle, can, water bottle slots on the side that, you know, for smaller water bottles. I'm going to be taking this, this little Nalgene. Or I don't even know if this is a uh, outdoor products cheapo that I found in Virginia. And I also have this. I'm bringing this as my other water bottle, which is a metal one. I'm, I feel more comfortable putting coffee and hot things into this. Again, it's maybe 750 milliliters. Um, so you've got a main compartment here. You've got a hydration, hydration pocket. I'm not going to be using the hydration pocket. Um, it's got a little clip to hang, to hang things on. I'll probably use this clip for other things. Um, it's got decent capacity in the main compartment. And then it's got these outside compartments here, which are, which zip. These are actually two separate compartments, each of these zips. So you can get in here, there's a small pocket. You can get in there, there's a small pocket. And then there's a main pocket inside. And instead of a head bag, there's this sort of, well, it's sort of a head bag. I've got this top head bag here. So, you know, the stuff I'm keeping in here keeping my titanium, light my fire spork, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, I've got Sharpie, in case I want to do some graffiti. No, I'm just kidding. Just a Sharpie, good, you know, permanent marker. Ballpoint pen with about three feet, maybe two, three, about a yard worth of duct tape on it. This is a good trick. Good place to put your duct tape on your pen, on a pen, so it's, you know, you're not wasting multi-use multi-use um and then i have a newer this thing here um it's one of my new gadgets which is just a a knock monocle a knock a monocle this is the rei monocle it's like gives you 30 10 which i'm gonna play with i'll have fun with it um you know just checking stuff out scoping stuff out so i got a monocle uh and then also this is a low end uh Tika, Petzl Tika uh, headlamp, which runs on batteries. I have another Petzl that I'm going to probably be using on the PCT, which is USB chargeable. This is this just takes uh, three AAA batteries. It's about 30 bucks. I had this on the AT. For most of the AT, I got this, I think, in Hanover. My other headlamp had died or broke. It's a Black Diamond gizmo, which is horrible. Um, but this nice, cheap, low-end Petzl, you know, gets you there, does the job. Probably not going to be using this a lot. I mean, maybe early morning or if I'm like, you know, night hiking into town or I don't know. But um, I think it's important to have some some light source. And I, I'm comfortable with a headlamp, even though I don't really need it. I'll probably get away with a flashlight. So in this into this, pa into this pack, I'm also going to have this little mini umbrella. Which will be helpful, you know, obviously when it rains or if it's sunny. I don't anticipate it being an issue of sun on the uh, 
Camino. It's really going to be an issue of rain in March. So I've got this in case I need it. I can always, you know, drop it. It's a cheap little, little uh, umbrella. Um, bandana. I'll go with my clothes first. Um, got nice hat. Pair of uh, little, uh, not neoprene, um, uh, synthetic, uh, I don't know what these are called, micro, uh, Polar Tech. Polar Tech gloves. Two pairs of, these are the Russell Athletic uh, compression uh, skivvies. And I got two pairs of these. Um, got them at Walmart. I think they're like about $8. Then I've also, it is going to be colder. I, I'm debating bringing long underwear, but this is what I had on the AT. It's a Capeline Floor hoodie, half zip, which I was really happy with. Keeps me warm. Um, and then the, the Capeline, those are, I think, Capeline 3 uh, bottoms, so long underwear. Got my Featherweight Capeline 1 Silkweight T-shirt, which I wore on the AT. I wore it the entire AT. This shirt stood up to the... To sit up to the task. I do like Kathleen. It does tend to smell a lot less. This is a cheap $8 starter synthetic shirt I got at Walmart. And then these are EMS uh, zip-offs. I have another pair that's coming that are a model that are zip-offs made by um, REI. Oh, and this is my dollhouse. I'm just kidding. It's not my dollhouse. But you got a problem with that? <laughs> so it's going to be cold on the Camino. Um, I've got this Merrill uh, Puffy, which will compress well. I'm debating bringing this. I might just bring this L.L. Bean fleece that I have here. I got a new fleece. I traded in the one I found on the AT and got a store credit to buy a new fleece. These cost about $60 at L.L. Bean, something like that, $50, $50 $60 at L.L. Bean. Really happy with this. I love it. It's nice and warm. And then I have my Ascent uh, Pro Shell raincoat, Gore-Tex coat. This is really warm just by itself. Um, I have this on the AT. I was very happy with it. It keeps you protected from the elements. Um, I'm not sure if they still, if Elbean still manufactures a Pro Shell at this price. Um, when I got this, it was maybe $300, $280, $260. Um, it is a, the cheapest Pro Shell, Gore-Tex Pro Shell you can buy. I really like this a lot. Um, the Arcteric Pro Shell is more expensive. But a Pro Shell, Gore-Tex Pro Shell, not a bad thing to have for your rain gear. But again, the, my coat, I'm trying to figure out whether I could just go with a fleece. It's going to be in the 40s. could probably get away with just having a fleece. I didn't have a puffy when I did the AT southbound. Um, so, you know, I was in 20-degree weather in a fleece and a, my Gore-Tex coat. So I don't know if I'm even going to bring the, the puffy. I might leave that at home. Probably leave that. So probably just uh, just the uh, the fleece in the Gore-Tex coat. And anyway, um, for a guidebook, I have this book, which is the Camino Portugues, A Pilgrim's Guide to the Camino Portugues uh, by John Brearley. Um, I've looked through it a little bit. It, it's, it's the, Again, this is a much shorter hike than the AT. It's only um, 380 miles. And it has great notes. I mean, just looking through it, it the elevation profile, I mean, doing the Appalachian Trail and having days where I'm going up 2,000 feet, down 2,000 feet, up 900 feet, down 900 feet, uh, the Camino Fortigas will be a nice break from that. It's going to be basically, I don't think I have a climb more than six or 700 feet. There might be a 900 in there, but the days are not nearly as bad. Like, that's actually, the, the top line there is 200 meters, which is what, like 600 feet or something? And that's, you know, it, it's doing about 18 miles a day, so... Um, I haven't had a chance to really go through this. This comes highly recommended. I, this is the guy. This guy does um, the various different routes that you can do the Camino. Uh, you can do the Camino from Paris, from Alps in uh, France, from... I mean, you could, in theory, start from Vienna, uh, 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 the Netherlands, Brussels, England. Um, there are about, you know, there's quite a number of routes. Most people, I think the majority of people start in... France, I'm doing the Portuguese route because I want to do the PCT um, after I come back from this. So this is my guidebook. I also have downloaded some maps onto my uh, onto my iPad. Um, for sleeping stuff, I'm never, I'm not going to be camping. You don't camp on the um, the Camino. Um, there's no need for a tent or a bivy or anything like that. 
And I'm not even bringing a sleeping bag. I'm bringing my my sleeping bag liner, which I had on the AT. Um, and then this cashmere. It looks like a scarf. It's rolled up. It's basically just a very small cashmere um, shawl. Um, it's actually for women. But um, it's made of... It's it's going to be warm. You know, it's just a just something to throw over myself as I sleep. Um, again, it's wool. So I know it's going to... Uh, keep the stink out and it's going to be warm even if it's wet but I don't anticipate it getting wet because I'm going to keep it in a, in a stuff sack in my bag um, my clothes are going to go into this ratty old Sea to Summit um, uh, what is it called? Sea to Summit it's an 8 uh, 8 liter nano nano uh, cell stuff sack which also acts as a good pillow um, then I've got a couple, a couple of other stuff sacks, one of just toiletries and stuff like that, random gear. And then this is, you know, it's nice to have a tiny food bag. This is basically just going to be for snacks during the day. And I plan on replenishing pretty much every day. I plan on eating my meals in, in restaurants. But I've got some, you know, just like some granola bars and a jar of peanut butter in here right now. Just as something to bring with me when I get off the plane, I can not have to worry about the first day with worth of supplies and use that to keep my energy up. Um, that's my sleeping stuff. Obviously, you do the community, you need to have your passport. You gotta have your passport. Um, you can travel to the, I believe it's called the Schengen area, Schengen, uh, which is basically the European Union. You can go there as a U.S. citizen with your passport for 90 days. Um, after, if you've stayed 90 days, you have to leave. You can only you can only be in the European Union for 90 days out of every 180, unless you get a visa. So I plan on completing the Camino in 30 days. But if you were say doing trying to do like the E3, hiking to Istanbul or hiking a much longer trail, like say from Norway to Italy, you know, a, a, a trail that could take a year, um, you would need to apply for and uh, get a, a permit. Uh, a visa to stay in the EU. Um, and my understanding is those are rather difficult to get. It's very difficult unless you have family or relatives or some blood, like within one generation, blood ties in Europe. It's difficult to get a work visa there. It's difficult to get an extended visa to stay there for a long time. It is possible. But um, for uh, Cam the Camino Portugues, you could do, I'm just going to fly to Lisbon, no visa. I'll be in and out probably in about 30, 35 days. So... Got to have your passport. Um, now, my footwear. Going with these Merrill uh, stretch uh, shoes because I know it's going to be cold and it's going to be wet. And these are extremely waterproof shoes. This is basically almost a neoprene booty in the shape of a shoe. This is uh, my dream shoe for freezing cold weather. Um, they fit well so far. I like the lacing on them. They've got the auto. You, you don't have to tie your shoes. You just pull the laces tight. Um, they're snug. They're comfy so far. We'll see how they shake out on the hike. But I'm really interested to see how these go. I like them a lot. I, I, I've liked Merrill shoes a lot, in case you haven't watched any other videos I've done. Uh, for socks, you've got to go with darn tough socks because they're the best socks around. It's a new pair I'm going to be bringing. Um, you know, these have a... Lifetime guarantee, unconditional lifetime guarantee. Um, I really hope this company stays around forever and they keep making socks because I really like them. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Now, in addition, I'm bringing my iPhone and I'm going to be bringing an, I, an iPad mini. Oh, there, look, there's me. I'm bringing an iPad mini, um, not this one. Uh, this is just sort of what I had, my old iPad, because the iPad mini is lighter. Um, obviously. And then just for toiletries, you don't have to bring a lot of stuff. Um, probably going to carry one or two of these Kleenex things. Uh, you, you can use them as toilet paper and as I, as I did on the AT. Um, good to have, let's see, just a little hand sanitizer, Purell, because, you know, I'm going to be using, uh, filthy Pilgrim's accommodation. <laughs> Um, some amoxicillin, uh, just in case I get sick. This is all, uh, by prescription, but if you have a doctor, you know, they know you're going to be doing a lot of hiking on the trail, get a prescription for some penicillin. It's very good in case you get a, uh, 
you know, bad infection or anything like that, you get a cut. This is really, I got this really to go to take with me on the PCT, but still got it anyway. Um, see, gonna, I only, don't have that much other stuff in here. I could comb, oh, comb here. It's comb. Uh, this is my electro, my electronics bag. This is where my chargers are going to go. Remember, you also have to bring an adapter, an international adapter, so that your plugs can work. U.S. plugs are different than the plugs in Europe. Uh, some earplugs because those pilgrim hostels, I know we're going to have people snoring in them. I don't anticipate there being that many people else out on the Camino Portuguesa, but you know, for airplanes or if I have to take a train or something in, in uh, Portugal or Spain, I'm going to have some earplugs. Um, this is my little med kit. This is still in the bag I had on the AT, but I've got some tape in here, some crazy glue, some iodine, some neosporin, a couple of little bandages. Nothing major, just, you know, a little thing of Tylenol there. This is one thing I've, that I enjoyed having on the, the AT. This is just this little tiny, you can wash socks in the sink with this tiny little single use. It's really just enough tied to wash one article. You could probably do all of your laundry, but it's not going to smell really good. You know, this is a bigger single load uh, thing of Tide bring it to do laundry as I go just on the off chance I can't get laundry done any other way um, oop, just a little uh, hand lotion tiny little container I've got a much bigger bottle of Dr. Bonner's be using this as my main as my soap you know you can brush your teeth with this if you have to it's very mild you can wash your pack if you need to this is the same toothbrush I have in the AT it's just a We'll travel toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, using some toothpaste. Let's see, we've got a little thing of Barbasol. I, I am going to be shaving on this because I'm going to be going through towns and seeing like normal people in Portugal. So I'm going to shave every day. So I've got my little travel size shaving cream. Um, let's see. Not too much else. There really isn't a lot else here. I think I've got toothpaste, a little thing of like hotel shampoo that I had. Um, a little bottle of Motrin, Advil. I am going to actually make sure that I have a good supply of Advil and ibuprofen just because I don't know how. I imagine that you could get it anywhere from Portugal, but it's just a question of going to stores and having to hunt for brands that I can't recognize. And my Portuguese is horrible. So, um, and just some more toothpaste, toothpaste, and some more just like hand cream, soothing essentials, use them. Just like a chafe or something. I'm also going to have a little thing of petroleum jelly for chafe. Um, things I don't have here. I don't have um, my sunglasses. I got Julbo uh, sunglasses. And uh, got another pair of pants. But this is basically it. This is all I'm taking the Camino. It's going to take me about between 23 and 30 days. I'll probably take some days where I just sort of walk around towns and maybe take some side trips. But um, should be a fun trip. So let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or if you think I'm making any horrible mistakes with my gear choice. I, I'm just trying to get everything again into this little 30-liter bag, um, which is proving to be a little bit of a task. So anyway, thanks. And I'll, I'll hopefully be doing videos as I go along the Camino. Um, don't know how that's going to go. I don't know what Wi-Fi is like in the Hermitages and other places. So... I might be uh, just posting videos when I get back. Also, I'm, I'm not going to be doing this on my iPhone. I'm, I'm getting either a GoPro or an Olympus TG3 camera. I'm not quite sure yet which I'm going to go with. There's things about the Olympus I like in terms of still photography. There's things I like about the GoPro in terms of video quality. So I'm debating what camera to get right now. But I'm going to definitely have a better camera. So I uh, hope you all liked the video. Hopefully I'll, you'll stay tuned for... Uh, videos from the Camino Portuguese. Bye.